Psalms 37. Victory, a Psalm of David. Fret is to rub, wear away by friction, corrode, tease, or irritate. Fret not. Don't become worn away. Don't become corroded. And we're going to read some things about fretting here in this chapter. Get the victory. Fretting is not victory. It can cause great harm to your health. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. And you look at some people and you say, well, you know, they're doing pretty good. And we found that when we studied the book of Job. But we got our eyes on the wrong thing. We're not to look on these things of the earth. This is not our home. We're to seek the things above. And think about what God will give us, not what the world. Peter says it's all going to go up in a fervent heat. Neither be thou envious, and that's a sin. That was a sin why they brought Jesus to Pilate. And Pilate proclaimed it for envy. Envy and pride will never be found with God. Envy is when somebody gets something, and for whatever reason, you're upset. Or you think you deserve. Against the workers of iniquity. You're not to look at evil and iniquity people and say, Oh, I wish I had that, or I wish I was like them. That's a sin. And what is the church doing today but bringing the worldly evil and iniquity, workers of iniquity, into the church house? Because after all, that's the only way we can win Jesus if we bring the world. I mean, they're going, I mean, you can come up with excuses. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, the evildoers and the workers of iniquity. Jesus told a parable about sowing seed, and an enemy came and sowed in tares among the wheat. And there's going to be a harvest one day, and the tares are going to be bound up and cast into the furnace of fire. And wither as the green herb. Wither means it dies, slowly dies. I mean, if we get a frost tonight, people's outdoor plants are not going to wither. They're just going to die. So it tells you what's going to happen. Cut down grass. That's it. Gone. You can't glue grass back. Trust in the Lord. Don't fret. Trust in the Lord and do good. That's how you don't fret. That's how you not be envious. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. Uh-oh. That is not written to a Gentile. That is not written to a church age. That is written to the Jew. The Jews have been given the promise of the land. We have been given the promise of New Jerusalem. A city. So if you apply this to a doctrine, to a church, or to a Christian, you are wrong. And there's too many Christians out there who will dwell in the land. We're not dwellers, we're pilgrims. We're sojourners. You know, you hear people, you hear Christians say, well, I'm on my way home. Okay, I'm home now. No, you're not. Unless you die or the rapture, you're not home. You're in your dwelling. And verily thou shalt be fed. Now get the land because there's going to be some things in this chapter. You're going to read, and you cannot apply them to us. The land is the key word of this chapter. Delight thyself also in the Lord. You can do that. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Doing right will not bring carnal requests. Isaiah 40:31. That verse implies you, you've you got to do right in the Lord and ask the Lord for right things in order for him to do, give one your heart. you got to be so right that you're not going to ask God for foolish and wicked lustful things. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust in him 
and he shall bring it to pass. Paul prayed to the Lord three times about the thorn in his flesh. And he didn't get the victory. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Out and open for everyone to see. And the wicked and the, and the, and the cockroaches that don't want light, they'll run. Rest in the Lord. Now you know that verse is not ours. We're told to go ye in all the world. We're told to put the armor on. We're told to fight. We are not told to rest. Our rest is not to New Jerusalem. Rest in the land to the Jew. Had they done right. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. No, it's his way, not God's way. And that matches with verses 1 and 2. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Now see, it's not a man that follows God. It's a man that follows wickedness and Satan in his own way. You're not to, to irritate yourself with those things. Say, well, you know, if I only be like that. No, you be what God wants you to be. And that's the perfect thing. Listen, if God wants a pastor to have one person in his church, you better have that one person than five million. If God tells you to walk down the street, you better be well to walk down the street than, you know, go win 5,000 souls. It's what God wants you to do. For evil, evil doers shall be cut off. Cut off means that's it. You're done. You're in hell. There's no more hope. But those that wait upon the Lord, shall they shall inherit the earth. Another key word. There's a new heavens. There's a new earth and a new Jerusalem. We do not get the new heavens. We do not get the new earth. We get New Jerusalem. This is written to a Jew. Who has done right in the eyes of the Lord. There are Jews out there who were evildoers, who were workers of iniquity, who were doing their own ways, and they were prospering. And God will cut them off just as much as any Gentile because they had the law. They had what God told them to do. They're without excuse. For yet a little while, now study that in the Bible, that little while. Jesus is talking to the, to the disciples, yet a little while, yet a little while. And the disciples said, we don't understand what a little while means. And what's he mean by a little while? And Jesus says, you don't understand what I meant by a little while? And then a little while? Those are two words that are important in the Bible. They're forever showing up, a little while. And the wicked shall not be. You know there's coming a day when there will be nobody that has disobeyed or rebelled against God will ever be seen. Read Revelation 21 and 22. No whoremongers, no liars, no this and that shall be in the gates of the city. Everybody that, that rejects Christ will be put into hell. You'll never see them again in your life. Everybody who's giving you a hard time. You say, well, I've, I've got a Christian that gives me a hard time. I said, everybody that gives you a hard time, you take that where you want to go. Yet thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. You look over there, there's his house. There's his land. There's everything he got. And one day it's going to be all gone, melted up with the, with the firm and heat. What is it then? Well, if I can make all the money, I'll do whatever it takes. I don't care following Christ no more. If I do whatever it takes to get money and a good life, and where's that life after you're dead? Where will that life be when the earth is gone? Here's an interesting passage. 
that is found in Matthew. Matthew's written to Jews, not the church. That's another key. But the meek shall inherit the earth. Inherit what? The what? See, that is not. What did God tell Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve tribes? He said, I will give you that land that you are in. He never told that to one Christian. He didn't tell that to any of the disciples. He didn't tell that to any of the apostles. Not once did Paul mention, you'll get a land. Never. And shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. A thousand year reign. And then wait till you get out in the millennium. A thousand years. Then, what, then you got the all eternity on the new earth given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the twelve tribes. To those who have done what God told them to do. Which, I really don't know what happens to a Jew that gets saved today. Does he go in, I mean, the Bible says neither Jew nor Greek. Does he go into New Jerusalem? Or does he go and get the land grant? Both are best. But which one will a saved Jew get? Jews get the land. No Jew, ask Jonah, ask Peter, would really want to have a Gentile living with them. We're dead dogs. The wicked plotted against the just. That is true. And gnash upon him with his teeth. Go ask Stephen what that verse means. Chewing. You know, there's a church out there that's wicked. They're plotting against the poor people. And they tell you, if you take this cookie, you're eating a body. I guess that's gnashing a teeth. The Lord, how cruel, shall laugh at him. A liberal would not like that God. You know, we are in a day and an age in America today that no joke is funny. Every joke you tell would be be racist. It would be uh, uh, just wicked. And yet, but there are books out there with blonde jokes. There's books out there with Jewish jokes. There's books out there with Baptist jokes. But you'll be a heretic. And the Lord shall laugh at him. Read Proverbs chapter 1 and... Uh, well, Proverbs 1 or 2, I forget now. And Psalms chapter 1 and 2. For he sees that his day is coming. God knows when, when your day is up. And God says, I see that man, I see his life, and he, he his life is a vapor, James says, and he's going to fall off in eternity, and ha, 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 you thought you're so smart. You can both claim I'm an atheist. Ha 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 Atheist, wait till you stand before me. I'll show you what an atheist is. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow and cast down the poor and needy. That's what our government's doing. And it's going to get thicker and more. Because the Antichrist is going to become, listen, you Tea Party jerks, you Christian, I'm going to change the government. The Bible proclaims that the Antichrist is going to bring more taxes. The more taxes we have proclaims that the Antichrist is coming and the rapture is going to happen before that. Amen. Glory to God. And the government proposes a 100% tax on my life. God says, be content with food and raiment. And I will have to live by what God gives me. Sword and bow are our weapons of armor. Or, 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 army, excuse me. And slay such as be of upright conversation. Now that conversation is not talking. That is a manner of life. These people are against the upright. 
Marvel not my world, my my brethren, if the world hates you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you are living upright, your life ought to be in a target of Satan and of the evil men and women out there. And if you're not, then you're not living your life right. I didn't say that. John did. Jesus did. Their sword shall enter their own heart. It says in Revelation, he that kills the sword shall die by the sword. You get what you sow. Well, I know somebody who didn't die by the sword. You wait till they hear the word of God, the sword. Hebrews 4.12. You wait till they hear the word of God, tell them to go to hell. Or excuse me, the lake of fire. Go well, jump in the lake. That would be a sword. And their bowels or bowls shall be broken. Well, you can't use a broken bow. A little that a righteous man has is better than the richest of the many. Little as much as when God is in it. Our church can do more with people who are broke and broken than you can go and witness to on Capitol Hill. You may get one person saved on, on Capitol Hill, but for every one person you get saved on Capitol Hill, you'll get five to six or seven down on the streets that will get saved. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. That's a, that's a reference as far as arm to Antichrist. But if your arms are broken, what can you do? Absolutely nothing. You're lame. But the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Lord ain't going to break you. The Lord knows the days of the upright. He knows when you're coming home. And their inheritance shall be forever. As far as what we've been talking about, the earth, the land, the new Jerusalem. The Jews will get a better earth. Listen, even after the millennium, Satan's loose for a short time. And then one more battle, and God just kills them with fire. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. Tribulation. So what's it say over there in Romans chapter 10? If you believe on the Lord, thou shalt not be ashamed. You're not to be ashamed as a Christian. Too many are. You suffer the worst. Listen, you're going to get the better. People fighting you because you're doing right. God said it would happen. God said, I'll reward you. Happy be, Peter said. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Well, we're talking about Jewish. There have been plenty of Christians that have starved to death. The Waldisians were, were chased off in, in, the, in the dead of winter into the mountains and all that, and many of them died frozen. I guess verse 19 is not Bible because, you know, they had famine and they died. Yeah, but guess what? It's not to us. Be careful what you quote. Get the contents. The contents is Jews. But the, the wicked... Well, that reference is always the Antichrist, the Satan. The wicked shall perish. Amen. The glory to that. And the enemies of the Lord. Okay, that's everyone besides the wicked. You got Satan and everybody is working with him. Shall be as the fat of lambs. Where did the fat of lambs go? That's what God said to offer. You're not, you know what? You're not to eat the fat. Why? Because it represents enemies of the Lord. Isn't there something I mean, you shall not bite or devour one another? I'm trying to think if that's really scriptural. Is that just one of those things that I think it says somewhere you're not to bite or devour each other? 
They shall consume. Now, how was that fat consumed? In flames. On that burnt altar, which was a picture of hell. Whose smoke shall they consume away? Now, I don't, that don't say H-E-L-L, -L, but what do you get the picture of? H-E-L-L. -L. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. Uh-oh. All right, somebody quote me a couple times in my life. Yeah, but when, when, when you borrow something and the economy fails, you better be careful who you blame. The wicked. Oh, Satan borrows and pays not again. The wicked borrows and pays not again. His motive is he's going to get the money and he's going to devise a scheme not to pay. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. You're to be giving. As a Christian, better watch how you give. Like Pastor and I have always said, you just don't hand out money. There's a proper way of doing it. They want food, take them down to a restaurant. Don't give them money. And when I'm on the street downtown, I just, because we're down there to witness, we're not down there to feed anybody, I, we ain't got money. And I'm not down there to feed them. And once we get the church stamp, we'll stamp the name to it. You want to be fed? Here's a church that will preach to you and will feed you. And we'll have the address and the phone number and pastor's name on it. And there you go. And we'll see how many people really want to get fed. I'll send them off to my pastor. And my pastor will give them the word of God. And then he'll give them a meal. It's great to be in a good church, isn't it? Send them off other churches that probably butcher them and then sell the meat. For such, who? The wicked. We're not done. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth. I'll take that back. For the such is the righteous that shows mercy. For such shall be blessed of him and shall inherit the what? We're not talking about Christians. Don't go up to a Christian and say, Oh, you're wicked because you didn't pay your debt. That's not to you. There were Jews that were, were that were charging other Jews, which was a violation of the law, a surety, and they were charging them uh, pledges. And they were charging them usury. And they would go to a Jew, a fellow Jew, and borrow money and then come out with a way not to do it. There's no Gentile in this verse, in this chapter. That's why I said you have to watch the key words. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. That cut off you find in the Old Testament. Paul doesn't ever mention, I don't believe, cut off. I don't think John ever mentions cut off. The steps of a good man. There's none good that doeth. What was a good man in the Old Testament? One that obeyed the law. And did and brought what he was supposed to bring. Listen, we're saved, but we still sin. The steps of a good man, the steps, walking. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. I guess you can say Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Though he fall, uh-oh, he fell from grace, oh, no. Though he commit a sin, he falls, he, I mean, does something wrong, he shall not be utterly cast down. 
God doesn't say, oh, that one little sin, you're going to hell. God's not like that. If you're a good man in the eyes of the Lord and you fall, God, he's not going to cast you down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. The Lord, take, the Lord will keep you from falling all the way. The Lord will protect you if you do right. Matter of fact, if you sin and you do what the Lord, you're, you're right in the eyes of the Lord. I mean, you pray, you read your Bible, you study, you, you try to do the best you can. And if you fall into that sin, listen, God's going to uphold you. He, without the Lord, if you were backslidden, you would probably gone into worse condition. God knows your heart. And if you want to do right, God will be with you. He's our father. What father would see a, a, a son of his going to go about to get in trouble or get smacked, run over by a car would not, hey, stop. But too many children don't listen and they just go running out in the traffic and get hit. But God knows it all. He's a, he'll stop you even before you come to that curb. I have been young, David writing, and now am old. Okay. This is an important verse. I have not seen the righteous forsaken. All right. I'll never leave you forsake thee. Nor his seed begging bread. So you tell me every born again Christian has the promise, oh, you're never going to beg for bread. I guess right here in Holly Hill, I guess they're not saved. Because we offer them bread. And if you teach that to one of my brethren or somebody at the church that I am at right now, I hope God sends a lightning rod right through your butt. Right through the hole. And come out your mouth. Because what are we talking about? We're not talking about the church. You know what Paul said in one of his pearls? In hungers? And thirst? Paul went without food and went out with, went without water. And guess what? He's much of a Christian as any Christian today. Read the story of the Waldisians. Read the story of the first pilgrims that came to America in the winter. As a Christian today, you may have to beg for bread. Especially this government keeps on going the way it's going. But why is this thing so different with David right? Because the law says if somebody was poor, you were to take care of them. When was the last time in America you seen somebody walking down your street in your city? You never knew it. Hey, come on into my house, and I'll give you a place to stay, and I'll give you food and all that. And then on the morning, you, <laughs> yeah, right. And you call ourselves a Christian nation? We're under the law. The law says you are to take care of your brothers. You are to take care of your brethren. You know, in the church age, it's optional. We're commanded to love your brethren. But you may have to beg. What are you going to do when there's no more jobs in America? You don't tell me. Oh, oh don't tell me it's not ever going to happen. It's going to happen. He, God, is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. God will supply your needs. Sometimes the best thing he can give to you is death. Sometimes he may give you tribulation of lack of food.
This one can go for us. Depart from evil. Bible says, Paul says, abstain from all appearance of evil and do good. See it first or second Thessalonians chapter four. Read those those final verses. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. I guess that can go that listen, if you can match what Paul says, we can match that. And dwell forevermore. Uh oh. That dwelling's in the land again. So we we got half that verse for us, but not You know how you know this is for the Jew? Did the Jews do right? Did they end up dwelling in the land? Is Israel today fully Jewish? The land? No. Because they have been wicked. They have not done what God told them to do. For the Lord loveth judgment. God is judge. Judge not least he be judged. Listen, you rather have me judge you than have God judge you. I it says over Corinthians, I rather judge myself than have God judge me. You don't want to have judgment. As a born again Christian, stepping out of, the, of what this psalm is about. What about the born again Christian? When he puts it under the blood today, under the shed blood of Jesus Christ, under the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ, what is there to be judged? Nothing. 1 John 1 9. And forsaketh not his saints. Must be them dead people again. No. They are preserved forever. Now, you may put that for death, but what happens to a body when it's in the ground? It's not preserved. It gets dinky, I think, I think uh, uh, Martha said. Martha said it gets dinky in four days. So the Roman Catholic Church, if you go back there saying, it's going to get dinky. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. That's not you. Go back in Genesis and Exodus where the Lord says over and over and in the law of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, the land, the land, the land, the land. I don't mean the land of Florida. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. Are we righteous as born again Christians? And do you know somebody who's righteous as born again Christian that speaketh wisdom? I can show you plenty that don't. What is the righteous in the Old Testament? A guy that does what the law says to do. David had an uncle that spoke unrighteously to Amon about uh, the, the Tamar. You know, that guy didn't go to the temple. And his tongue talketh of judgment. Oh, judge not least he be judge. The Bible says in Corinthians, I can judge things. I can tell you about the things in your life. Not you, the things. I can walk up to someone on the street and say, unless you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will go to hell. You at least should not be judged. Well, get it right now before God judges you. The law of the the law of his God. Are we under the law? Go we'll talk to Paul. Romans. Uh, I forget which, which one of the... Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, or Clark, which one of those where they went back to law? Read that book where Paul says about the law. Don't go to Hebrews. The law of his God is in his heart, and none of his steps shall slide. You see what 
the modus operandi here is? Do you see what the person who is righteous in this chapter, do you see what it takes for him to do what's right? The law. It is not to the Christian. If he obeys the law, he gets the land. They did not obey the land. So God sent Nebuchadnezzar into the land. They didn't obey what God told them. So he sent the Romans into the land. None of his steps shall slide. Oh, I know Christians that backslide all the time. But we're not under the law. Context. The law. The wicked watches the righteous and seeketh to slay him. The life of Jesus Christ. If you don't get the life of Jesus, it is right there. Now, who was the wicked? The religious leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes. Psalms 37, 32 told you what those men were. They were wicked. Saul seeked after David. Now, which one was wicked? Which one was right? The Lord will not leave him in his hand. The righteous in the hand of the wicked. Nor condemn him when he is judged. If you do what you're supposed to. Wait on the Lord. Okay, that's good for us. And keep his way. Well, for us it would be Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And he shall exalt thee to inherit. There's those two words again. The land. When the wicked are cut off. Thou shalt see it. You know that, that verse 34, when was that supposed to happen? Anybody know when that was supposed to happen? That was supposed to happen during Joshua's time. Weren't they supposed to go in that land and wipe them all out? I have seen the wicked in great power. Oh, yeah, President Obama. Listen, there's been wickeder people than Obama in, in authority. You know, what, what, what we seen about wicked? What about your President Reagan that had his wife seek a, a little tea bringing person and, and tell the leaves and the stars and all that other junk? That was wickedness. That's witchcraft, the Bible says. That's a sin. And spreading himself like a green bay tree. Green is a healthy tree. He just flourishes the wicked. No, he won't. We read over here, it says he's going to be cut down like grass. You know, Jesus spoke about a tree that, that, that grew big and all the birds in the air and all that. So, if you want to, study a bay tree. There's something to a bay tree with that. I mean, we're just going verse by verse through the chapters. We're not doing an in-depth study. But if you were to study a Green Bay tree, oh, I know, I know. Oh man, I know. Uh, you Christians today want you want to study the Green Bay Packers. You wish I wouldn't say stuff like that, would you? By the way, I'm going to tell you something about the Green Bay Packers. None of those guys pack meat for a living. None of the San Francisco 49ers have ever been 49ers. And I know the New Orleans Saints. I know there's no Saints there. And as I saw the New York Giants, there's, there's no one over seven foot tall. And Cleveland Browns, I, I've seen some are white and some are colored. I don't know. There's too many Browns. Uh, and then you got a team down here called the Gators. And they don't look like Gators to me. And, I don't know. To me, that would be a liar. If I wore my shirt, saint, and I wasn't a saint. That's a lie. You know? And they play on Sunday. You want me to go back on that? Yeah, he passes away. So that's where you get the expression, passed away. King James Bible, chapter 37, verse 36. Comes out of the Bible. There it is. 
Lucy thought I was full of it. And lo, he was not. Wait a minute. Yeah, I saw him, but he could not be found. Now that's interesting about a lost man. I don't really know how to describe it. But I don't want to go too deep in this. It's just when a lost man dies, he's alone, and you're not ever going to find him again. You'll never see a lost person anymore after the Great White Throne Judgment. If I can just say that for the sake of time. But that's a study there. Mark the perfect man. <laughs> the perfect in the Bible is one that has a proper motive. That wants to do what God wants him to do. And tries hard. It's not 100% perfect. And behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. Alright, let me stop there for a minute. Do you think Peter was a perfect and upright man? His life? You know how he died? He died being crucified on a cross upside down. I know one of the apostles was tied between two animals. And both those animals are set in two different directions and ripped his body apart. You think that was peace? Do you know, besides the Apostle John, all the apostles suffered a violent death? Fox's Book of Martyrs will tell you right now that verse is not for you. Okay? This chapter, oh, I read my psalms, holy, holy, full of baloney. I call this, I call this chapter victory for what? For the Jew that does right. Yeah, we get peace in heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, absent from the body to be present with the Lord. But this is why the guy's still living. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob died with, with their sons all around them. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. You, you get? You're wicked. You, you're not in a good shoe here. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength. In the time of trouble, ooh, Jacob's trouble, got relied on the Lord. You're either going to rely on the Lord, or you're going to rely on the mark of the beast. Jewish song. Jewish times. The time of Jacob's trouble. This can be a tribulation passage. Because if you do right, and you do what God wants you to do. And if you're talking about the land, when do you get the land to rest? The thousand year reign. Look at that. The victory is when you get over the wicked. And you get to go into the land in the millennium as Jesus Christ as the king. As David as the prince. Where the temple is. There we go. And the Lord shall help them. And deliver them. Revelation 20. He shall deliver them from the wicked. Revelation 20. Uh, excuse me. Revelation 12. I didn't mean to say 20. Revelation 12. And save them because they trust in him. None of this verse really is for the Christian. And we're going verse by verse, uh, chapter by chapter. So we're in Psalm 37 and we see a book for Jews. That's that plain and simple. It's a time when Israel should have done right. They didn't. It's going to be a time when, when the great tribulation, when the uh, time of Jacob's trouble, when they got victory over the wicked by God. In Revelation 12, God sends them down to the wilderness. They wait for the Messiah to come. He brings them on in. He, the battle of Armageddon, the devil's bound up. A thousand years, the Jews are in the land. As we close, O oh Lord, my 